There are plenty of games in the world that you don't need to play to know. If I told you the cake was a lie, you'd probably know exactly what I was talking about even if you hadn't played Valve's 3D puzzle game where that originated. Of course I'm talking about Portal, a franchise that's been interesting on consoles. Came out on PS3 and Xbox 360 via the Orange Box and hasn't seen a console release since 2007. While Xbox has always had the convenience of backwards compatibility, Valve and Nvidia decided to revive the two titles for an amazing port on a handheld console. Combining both games together, here is my review of Portal Companion Collection for the Nintendo Switch. The story of Portal takes place in a testing lab for Aperture Science. You awaken and walk through the lab, instructed to use a portal gun to solve puzzles with the promise of cake as a reward. While Portal 2 takes place much later, with you once again awakening within the lab that has been completely run down and falling apart. You then navigate around, being forced to take part in more testing as you try to figure out how to escape. Now the plot of Portal is interesting. There isn't much story to Portal 1 until you get to the end of the game, while Portal 2 does a lot of deep diving into the background of Aperture Science, GLaDOS, and Shell, the series protagonist. It's got a lot of fun, dark humor, and its connection to the Half-Life continuity brings some interesting references to players of those titles. Now when it comes to gameplay, Portal Companion Collection is a set of 3D puzzle games. As you trek through these adventures, you'll be using portal guns to teleport around rooms and use physics to solve puzzles, opening the door to the next chamber. Now first of all, this is a collection of Portal 1 and Portal 2, marking the first console release of these titles in 15 years. And the Nintendo Switch port is pretty special. We have gyro motion controls, local and online co-op for Portal 2, online achievements for both games, the developer commentary and challenge modes, but most importantly, the Portal Still Alive Xbox Live Arcade exclusive challenge maps are here on the Switch. You can't even play those maps on PC without a mod. Now let's dive into each of these games. Portal is a series about puzzles. You're given a gun where you can place connecting portals on different walls, floors, and other surfaces of a room and travel between them. Connect one portal to the ceiling and one to the wall in front of you and you walk through that wall and suddenly you're on the ceiling falling down to where you once were. Now the goal of Portal is to solve a puzzle. You use the portal gun along with cubes you can move around and place on switches to open doors or activate a part of the puzzle room. Physics are a big thing here with flinging yourself through portals with momentum or simply taking down a deadly turret by putting a portal above them and dropping a cube on their little heads. It's a pretty simple premise though it does get a little tricky, requiring you to look around a room for a solution, even if it's placing a portal up on the ceiling so you can look through the other one and see what else is in the room. There's a lot of thinking involved and it's a pretty intriguing concept. I always love the look and disorientation when you're walking straight through a portal and suddenly you flip around to being upside down. What's really interesting here is that Portal 1 has such a strong love in the gaming community with its lore and what's going on when in actuality, the first game is mostly just a puzzle game. Very little exploration, very little story at all. It's a tight and short little adventure of moving from one puzzle room to the next until the game is over. Almost like it's just a proof of concept. It wasn't until Portal 2 came around that it became larger and more expansive. That game has a single player campaign as well as a separated co-op campaign to solve puzzles with a friend. It also brought back the original mechanics while adding a lot to it, with larger rooms, more exploration and story, a bunch of new puzzle mechanics, and the list goes on. But whether you're a Portal 1 or Portal 2 diehard fan, there's a lot of fun to be had here. The aesthetic looks great and using portals to teleport around rooms and mess with gravity is a lot of fun to do, as is breaking the game if you do things just right. Remember the clipping glitch you could do in the Xbox version of Portal 1, letting you navigate around outside of the map if you did things just right and get into the cake room to prove that it is in fact not a lie? You can still do it on Switch in the exact same way. Takes a lot of retrying, reloading save datas, and throwing portals just right, but you can still get there. The only complaint I have about these games is how Portal 2 kind of dragged on for a long time. I thought the story and puzzles in the game were great, but once you get to the long underground area and final act, I felt the game just should have ended earlier. It was great to explore the past of Aperture Science, but it kind of felt long. And that brings us to content and length, which might be why I feel that way. This collection is only 20 bucks, and Portal 1 will last you about 3 or 4 hours on your first run, 
while Portal 2 took me well over 10 hours to trek through. That's plenty of time on its own, though there is replayability with Portal 2's co-op campaign, the challenge maps, developer commentary, and the Portal Still Alive bonus maps, as I mentioned earlier. But let's get on to presentation, the real topic of discussion here. Portals 1 and 2 were ported to Nintendo Switch by NVIDIA Light Studios, the same company that makes the Tegra X1 chip that powers the Switch. And this port really shows that when you know the technology, you can make miracles happen. The two games look phenomenal. No blurring outside of spinning while holding an item, a ton of detail on the signs around the game, and short load times. Its visuals are on par with the PC version, along with the backwards compatible Xbox 360 version on an Xbox One but what really sets it apart is performance. Portal and PS3 and 360 ran at 30 FPS, while on the Switch they run at 60. There are some areas with portals in certain levels where it will drop down into the 50s, but once you take your Switch out of the dock and go into handheld mode, it'll jump right back up. In other words, it's extremely impressive. And now that that's out of the way, let's go into battery life. On the original model, the Portal games on Switch have a battery range of 3 hours and 20 up to 3 hours and 56. The Nintendo Switch Lite gets a range of 3 hours and 45 up to 4 hours and 44. The Red Boxer V2 2019 model gets a range of 6 hours and 9 up to 6 hours and 50. And the OLED model gets a range of 6 hours and 33 up to 7 hours and 44. In conclusion, the Portal franchise has come to the Switch in top form, even surpassing the old PS3 and 360 versions. Now with a downside, Portal 2 does drag a bit towards the end, but everything about these colorful puzzle games is brought to the handheld world and shows how a developer can do amazing things when they know their hardware. Reviews to Go rates Portal The Companion Collection for the Nintendo Switch a 9.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.